On September 2016, we are embarking for a second trip to Tristan Acuna on the Esagolas 2. Uh, first, you need to go to customs to clear your passport. Bit of a queue there, and after a while, you you are back on the on the ship in order to proceed to the loading of your luggage. And in a matter of a few hours, you are at the back. A last look at Cape Town and the ship start to move. And soon we looking back and then uh, we will see the beautiful city of uh, Cape Town and the Table Mountain in the background for a last glimpse. And now we are in the open sea toward Tristan, a six to seven days voyage, six days on the Agulas, a bit longer on the fishing boat. And the sea turned blue. It's usually uh, rough after Cape Town for one or two days. But after a while, our stomach settled and then uh, we can enjoy the, the travel. We've got time to visit the ship and then uh, the people kindly show us the helicopter that the Agulas carry in order to transport goods and passengers to the island of Tristan but as well Gough Island. Uh, you can meet the pilots, you can meet the team and then very nicely we can visit uh, the interior of the ship the, the massive engine room it's really a special technology it's diesel generator uh, producing electricity basically for the the propellers you know so it's uh, a high-tech ship uh, designed to go to Antarctica it's actually uh, an icebreaker and then day by day, we just uh, move around, go outside, sleep, eat, read. And then uh, early in the morning, day it comes, a glimpse of Tristan after six days of travel. It's dark, but in the background, uh, we can slowly see the, the lights. Uh, of the settlement, the people are ready to come and collect us. A bit later, when the sun shines, when the sea is quiet, and then uh, we will slowly get there after this amazing travel in the middle of nowhere, as you can see. Fortunately, in September, uh, there's still a snow cap. Uh, sometimes very thick on Queen Mary's Peak, uh, located about 2,000 uh, meters above the sea level. And then the helicopter take us uh, to the island by group of uh, six, seven, depending on the helicopter. And then after a few trips, um, all the people on the island. It's, a, it's an amazing uh, trip uh, to travel by helicopter from the ship to the island. And soon uh, friends uh, are united, uh, families are united as well. And then you meet your new colleagues and friends. What is amazing is that uh, most of the villagers are uh, waiting for the people coming back from Cape Town. It's a beautiful sight, a very nice welcoming party and then yeah it's a, it's a highlight of the, the trip as well uh, so early in the in the journey so then they take us to our house and most as most of the house have a, actually a beautiful view on the sea and then uh, as you can see there are pretty old house but well furnished and then they've been evolved over the years and every time you arrive there there's a 
welcoming gift uh, from the islanders cookies uh, cakes other gift and then after a while we just go and walk and discover the island the free range chicken and ducks and and then walking around we can uh, see the settlement from uh, higher elevation and that's it that's where we'll stay for a few months and then we meet people chat to them in the street uh, especially when the, the sun is shining and as you can probably remember uh, Tristan was uh, waking up in 1961 by tremors and a volcanic eruption that uh, led to the evacuation of uh, islanders at that time and basically that changed the course of the island forever and then they returned a bit later uh, and resettled uh, as they couldn't adjust basically in the UK and then uh, they are still there and doing very well and what makes the strength of the Tristanian is the community spirit uh, and it helps especially in time of adversity like in the volcanic eruption in the 1960s the weather on Tristan is not that bad you got a fair amount of good days over the years even in winter despite an average temperature of 15 16 degrees and snow cap on for a few months on the year on Queen's Mary Peak but uh, you got also quite a fair amount of days when you got uh, basically gale force winds and sometimes with uh, damage to the house or the crops especially the potato crops but uh, the islanders are used to that type of weather for the past 200 years and then uh, for them, every day is basically a beautiful day. During heavy rainfall, uh, beautiful waterfalls do arise around uh, the island, around the settlement. Usu but usually that doesn't stop them to vacate to their occupations. And then uh, it's only when the, there's a serious storm eating the, the island that uh, basically people stay at home like you can see on these pictures uh, sometimes the sea is quite rough people are unable to fish people are unable to go out uh, people are unable to attend to their potato patches and then just wait for better days so uh, and better days are always coming on Tristan and when it does happen then the ship that was basically sheltering behind the island can come back and anchor uh, not far from the little harbor then the cargo is offloaded and the precious Tristan lo lobsters are loaded on the, the fishing boat where they would go back to Cape Town uh, to be sold on the on the international market China, Japan, Spain, Europe and it's the opportunity to to go and visit pay a, pay a visit to the, the captain of the number Captain Clarence who is a very nice person and fishing in those area uh, nearly 40 degrees south latitude is, is really not an easy task there are very few ship around, the sea is rough, so yes, uh, we all appreciate the hard work of those people to bring us cargo and passengers. On good days we walk around in the field, around the village, looking at the peak, hoping to conquer it one day, it's about 6,000 feet high. This is a little house when we always go back to and then we are so lucky that uh, people spoil us like crazy bringing us meat uh, even if we don't ask but the most uh, important thing for the islander is the, the potato crops that they start planting early in uh, August every year 
Potatoes are the main food supply of the island. It has been like that for many years and will remain so for many years to come, hopefully. It's hard work. The whole family is involved from the youngest to the, the oldest person of the family. It's so vital. They love it. They're passionate. They've got all the technique. Uh, that they keep like a secret sort of in the in the family but it's 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 really amazing to to see how devoted they are to the cultivation of the of the potato Day is basically devoted to to the potato, uh, if weather permitting, and when there's a storm, well, they cannot go to the field because it's too wet. But uh, other good days, then they have to fish, and they start fishing very young because it's also part of the 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 lifeline. Uh, no fish, no potato. No food. Don't worry. I mean, don't worry. Fishing is in, is in the, the blood as well. It's a passion. You know, they are passionate about the, the, the fishing. It's extremely hard work as well. Uh, waking up at 4 or 5 o'clock early in the morning and coming back home late at 6 7 o'clock and, and sometimes back the next day for a few days in a row. In, sometimes not too friendly water so yes it's 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 hard but uh, it's it's is the love line again uh, for many years and otherwise uh, fortunately we we don't have much uh, injury related to fishing and and potato planting but uh, in 2016 the UK has decided to erect a new hospital that would later be called the uh, Camogli Health Centre. You must remember that two fishermen came in from Camogli after the ship, the Italia, got shipwrecked in 1892. So those two Italians stay on the island and then uh, the rest is history. You must also remember that the first hospital was uh, donated by Camogli in Italy and was opened in 1971 and served the community very well until 2017 when the new one opened. Obviously we cannot deal with everything on the island and then we have to rely on passing ships Unfortunately, in the past, we've been helped many times by ships, and especially by the Royal Navy, passing by, always willing to help. And recently, we had to evacuate a serious emergency, and in no time, fortunately, they were around. They sent a helicopter and then took the patient to overseas for treatment and they are absolutely magnificent people very kind very professional it's it's really really uh, amazing to see how mankind can be so good and so helpful but sometimes there is no ship there is no helicopter the sea is too rough and if there's a serious emergency then we have to deal with it and do what we can do in the in the best way we can do it and the people are always helpful and very understanding of the situation but fortunately it doesn't happen often like i said it already every day on tristan is a beautiful day on sunday people go to church there are two churches one is the Anglican Church and the other one is a small Catholic Church. You can see here the, the small Anglican Church. 
And a while ago, the Justinian have rebuilt with volcanic rocks and New Zealand flags a typical old Tristanian house. The New Zealand flags are very helpful, they're very good uh, windbreaker and protecting usually the small crop every house has got around. And as you can see now and then you got all sorts of ships passing by, navy ship, you got visiting sailors around sometimes, uh, big sailing boats, sometimes very luxury uh, yachts like uh, Le Lirial from the Ponan company, French company, amazing ship, uh, is basically a floating five star hotel. And then you got the Intrepid traveling that far south on very small boat, usually from Brazil, uh, going back to, to Cape Town. And they always it's always amazing to hear the stories when they come and and dine in the in the post office. You got also sometimes wedding happening. Weddings are always special and beautiful occasions. And on very rare occasions, uh, expats do get married there, as is the case here with Mike and Nena. But uh, the whole island is always invited, and it's always, as I said, a very beautiful day. As you can expect it, the, the wildlife uh, in the sea and outside the sea on Tristan being so remote is absolutely amazing. You've got penguins, you've got seals, you've got elephant seals, you've got albatross, uh, you've got few birds uh, around who have survived there and basically have lost their ability to fly. So yes, there's a lot of uh, things to see and to admire just by uh, looking around you always wonder what's at the horizon what's in the sea but fortunately Tristan is not alone there in the middle of Norway you got two sister island one is called Nightingale and the other one you can see there it's called inaccessible just like it says it's very difficult to access the island, a huge, huge cliff, and then uh, it's basically a UNESCO heritage. Nobody lives there. You've got beautiful sunset that you, you can expect. And then, uh, like all of us, we are mortal and we need to depart. There is a beautiful cemetery uh, very close to the village where all the Tristanian are, are buried there, included the, the founder of the, basically the colony, Corporal uh, William Glass. One thing for sure on Tristan, it's always very sad to lose a member of the community, but you will never, never be forgotten. Shortly after the morning process, life must resume and the fishermen wake up again early in the morning, go fishing and like we say, life must go on. At the age of 16, all the young boys must start learning to fish for lobsters. They go out with their elders to learn the technique, to learn the sea, and the weather, it's a skill that they will carry on for the rest of their life. And if they are a bit too old and cannot go on, on the sea, they will carry on fishing, mainly around the harbor for five fingers. 
it's an amazing feast to see people at the age of 90, 91, 92, still fishing, still digging potato. They basically never stop working. Actually, working is probably not the right term. I would rather say surviving, because basically that's what they have to do. They have to survive in a very hostile environment, a bit less now than in the past uh, 50 years or so, but it's still a harsh place to live. But for them it's not a problem, you know. The weather is not an issue, the sea is not an issue. They've learned so many skills to, to survive. Having a strong Scottish uh, heritage, needless to say that the Christianian are a very good shepherd. Sheep sharing is a big annual event on Tristan, where all the family gathers, children, and it's really, really a nice atmosphere during the day, usually followed by a nice bride. Lambs have on the island to, to survive as well, but uh, not only for the meat, but for the wool. Still uh, a fair amount of ladies do spin the, the wool and, and knit with the, the wool they collect from, from the lamb. Unfortunately, it seems that the young one uh, don't take on this, this tradition, so it's going probably to disappear at, at, at some stage. Grazing is limited, as you can expect on Tristan, but the islanders do manage the, the territory quite well, and there are a fair amount of wild lamb on, on the base and around the island, so they will never run out of lamb, certainly. There's also some cattle around, close to the village and around the island. So meat is quite abundant on the island. The Agura soon left in September and brought some people on the island and Joe sadly must go back to Cape Town in October and will take passengers, families, cargo back to Cape Town. It's always a moving moment to, to say goodbye to people you might never see again. But uh, as I said before, many times Tristanian do accept life as it is. They're very thankful for everything they've got for everything they receive and most of them live a very very simple life with very basic means and they never ever complained it take few trips uh, for the helicopter to bring the people on the Esiagulas as well as the cargo, but the pilots are so skill skillful, it's such a beautiful thing to, to watch. Only about nine fishing vessels traveling between Cape Town and Tristan every year. So it's not, not a lot. And those vessels can only take 12 passengers per trip 
according to maritime regulation. As you can imagine, it's not then very easy for tourists to travel in and out of the island. Sometimes they can come, but they might be stuck for two or three months, as Medivac do take always a priority. But those vessels are vital for the survival of the, the island. They bring cars, they bring diesel, they bring gas, they bring cargo. They bring uh, food from, from Cape Town, frozen fruit, vegetable, toilet paper, and more importantly, medical supply that are absolutely vital for the population that are not always too healthy. But it's time for us to go back and to leave Tristan behind hoping to go again, as it's a magic place. But it's also well very nice to see in the early hours of the morning Cape Town and the majestic Table Mountain, and knowing that you are probably back home, but only for a while. I hope you enjoy it. Bye.